Hey there guys, it's Joey. So this is another video on the purification process. Another day, a different idea is what we're going with between the full moon and your which is tomorrow. And I will possibly not make a purification video on Yule because I'll have a lot to do and I will be recording bits and pieces of Yule just to show the world. I know a lot of people quite like the little vloggy videos so we shall do that. But today's video is basically about burning and smoke and that being one way of getting rid of negativity, of purifying yourself and your home. Fire magic is actually my go-to magic. It's the magic I f love, basically, and I find it to be usually some of the easiest magic, and I connect with it really, really well. And obviously to burn things is literally to burn away a physical item or to have things being consumed in the fire. And this is slightly different from the idea of the salt magic and the water magic which basically leaches out stuff. This is more of a destruction of the negativity to then allow for purification of home and self. I always recommend that if you partake in burning magic of any kind, like to rid yourself of a negative thing, to then sort of counterbalance it with the drawing spell. So if you were to banish a negative situation in your life, then to allow yourself to be open to positivity to fill it rather than for more negativity to just fill that void. Unless of course you are being taught a lesson, in which case you'll find yourself in the same scenario until you have learned a lesson. So there are a number of different ways in which burning magic can take place. I'm going to talk a little bit about stick incense first. And I'm going to finish up with a little recipe for a herbal blend on a charcoal disc incense. Um, but I wanted to talk a little bit about stick incense. So there are two that I use for purification purposes and the first one I have mentioned before which is the eucalyptus and hem seems to be the best that I've come across so far and then frankincense and myrrh and my favourite is the Stamford and we will actually burn frankincense and myrrh for today because we've talked a lot about eucalyptus yesterday. Now over the period of me investigating my path, a lot of people have poo-pooed stick incense. And I know there are people who make their own resin stick incense and you know that's a completely different thing, but a lot of people poo-poo this sort of incense for one reason or another. I'm presuming it's because it's mass available. It's obviously quick, it's easy, it's in most circumstances not created by the person using it. However, it is quick and it is easy and it is available and these shouldn't necessarily be seen as negative things. If you need to light a stick incense first thing in the morning and give yourself a quick smudge with it, which is something you can do with stick incense in the same way you would do with a smudge bundle, why shouldn't you? There are is a long history of smoke purification and this smudge bundle idea comes from the Native American practices. I just, I absolutely adore sitting here watching, look at that on camera, that's insane. I absolutely adore sat, sitting here watching the smoke and you can actually divine with smoke from incense like this, it's great. Quite often I will do banishing uh, pentagrams with these because you can use these much like you would use an athame or a wand or you know any tool that you would point. And if you think about it, you know if you do a banishing pentagram 
with a stick incense you have the added sort of purification of smoke going on. Plus they smell nice as long as you have one that you enjoy. It's guaranteed to smell nice and sometimes purification things such as if you go check out my pine cone video which is um, for purification purposes where you burn a whole pine cone I will link that in the down bar below that is a very potent way of purifying your home but it doesn't necessarily necessarily smell very nice and if you know you live with people or it's a concern stick incense can be a really great way to just gently purify the home. If you do it regularly, you're sort of regularly smudging and you can use this to smudge yourself. And the same way you would take on a smudge bundle, talking of which we have a smudge bundle here. So this is what a smudge bundle looks like for anyone who's not aware. I'm, ass I'm assuming most people who watch the video will know what a smudge bundle looks like, but some people may not. And this is a stereotypical version of the Native American smudge bundle. This is a miniature one. Everything in miniature recently, we noticed. <laughs> um, and this is sage, which is again typical of smudge bundles. And you can make your own smudge bundles and you can make your own incenses and you make your own smudge bundles in a number of ways. If you can grow your own herbs and gather them and everything then great. If not you can actually quite frequently you sort of buy fresh herbs and then sort of create your own smudge bundles from that or you can just purchase the pre-packed smudge bundles. It's all about filling it with your intent and using the smoke to change your vibrational energies and the energies around you and it's good to have a visualization process going when you're smudging with smoke as well. You can even say a few words you know let the smoke uh, come and em embrace me, may the smoke take away or negativity that sort of thing. I quite often hum or sing while I'm smudging because that again changes the vibrational energies around you and it's really great for that. So I don't particularly see the problem with stick incense I think I like both uh, I think it's, it's good if you know if you're short on time and you still want to it's better to use stick incense than, than not bother so I think it's a I think it's useful, I think it's great. Frankincense and myrrh of course being two very purifying resins. I didn't mention resins yesterday in the herb video for the specific purpose that we are going to be talking about frankincense and myrrh today. I'm going to use both of those in the, in the recipe even video, this is all the same video, <laughs> um, a little bit later on. I'll move this over here now. Oh. You can carry on smudging me from over there. <laughs> okay, so next up we'll talk about candles, I think. Now you can create your own candles for purification purposes. I'm actually probably going to make some tomorrow on Yule for that extra energy boost to my own purification candles. Now Purification candles are something to be made, ideally when you don't feel under psychic attack, when you don't feel that the air is icky and horrible, and you don't feel miserable and horrified all the time. Um, in, in the very worst case situations that I've been in, I went through a, a period where I just, many years ago, where I couldn't shake this feeling, this, this negative feeling. I'd been through life trauma myself and a friend turned around and sent me a parcel. She's nothing to do with YouTube or anything. Um, and it was, you know, purification herbs, uh, purification incense, uh, purification uh, crystals that she charged. She sent me some war water. She's, she sent me a whole box of stuff that I could just instantly use. And in those circumstances, things like the stick incense and the smudge bundles are brilliant because you don't have to fill them with your intent and energy. They're already done. It helps if you, obviously, it will help you if you um, do do those things on a regular basis. But if you are in a funk, so to speak, and you can 
get outside help to shift that energy so then you can start purifying yourself, purifying your home and protecting yourself afterwards, then um, that's really a bonus. So if you know someone that will help you, and even if you don't, you can, you know, stick incense is one of those things you could use. Um, you can get bits and pieces and from all over the place, really. So candles, um, you can create in a number of different ways. You could create a banishing and burning up negativity candle type thing. You could create a purification type candle type thing. Now the difference in the two types of sort of purifying home and self in those is that the burning negativity thing is sort of the destructive one and the purifying the energies and keeping them renewing is the sort of lighter, gentler, renewing one, if you like. I would suggest doing both in combination. Um, thinking, if I'd have thought about that, I would have grabbed a white candle as well, but black candle. <coughs> Seeing as this is the destructive video, actually over there, if I weave my way around the camera, I'll show you something you can do. Right, while we were lo are looking at the black candle, however, black candles are fantastic for burning away negativity. If you so desired, you could just utilise a black pre-made candle. This is one that was sent to me, which I have plans for. <laughs> and you could decorate it yourself by uh, carving into it with some words of banishing negativity. You could anoint it with an essential oil, maybe, if you're alright with that. So again, eucalyptus, that would be great. You could empower it with crystals, so... Uh, boop. And where's my smoky quartz? There you are. My other smoky quartz is over there, but... Like so. And then you would visualise your intent of getting rid of all negativity. You could see negativity as a cloud being lifted. Um, I have a... I made a really nice visualization meditation up myself where you visualize the, um, yourself being surrounded by not cobwebs but that sort of sticky icky idea of a cobweb and you sort of blast that with white light or you shake it off and you you know you brush it off and you visualize all that being lifted from you with white light and that's really great for getting rid of negativity using candle magic. And of course then, once you've filled your candle with that intent, and if it's a bit of a bigger one, you can use it whenever you feel the need. Another thing you can do that's really good with um, candles, and it's super easy, and I just touched on it, is to have a black candle and a white candle for the sake of the two types of burning away negativity, destruction here and then the renewing purifying energy here so your black little tea light or your black little candle is for the purpose of, of destruction and then your white little candle is for the purposes of renewal and purification so they balance each other out and one is getting rid one is pulling in both for working for a positive intent for that purpose you could add a little a herb to each one if you so desired. If you wanted to add different ones you could or if you wanted to add the same one you could and if you were going to go with the same one let's, I think I would recommend rosemary for both so all you need to do is just I mean you can make your own tea lights like super easy they're like the easiest thing in the world to do so um, if you wanted to like put your own herbs within them that would be really really easy and that is something else of course with candle magic if you do make your own candles which a fair few of us do um, you can then put the herbs in, in resins as long as they are safe to burn and things and you know what you're doing obviously check before you put anything in into the candles or you can buy scented candles by scented candles with a scent which is purifying. If you can get eucalyptus candles, 
I would buy those all goddamn day. I'm probably going to make my own, but I don't think it's yum. Eucalyptus, the smell, I love the smell of eucalyptus. Pretty sure you can get frankincense candles and things like that as well. So, you know, the scent of things is going to help purify you because scent is a sense and it sort of lifts the mood and lifts the energy. And that sort of thing is exactly what you need in purification and in burning magic because the scent of things changes our vibration and helps purify us and our home. Okie dokie. Let's move those. So I think the very last thing I want to talk a little bit about candle magic in the terms of burning and things is which one should we use? Um, I think this one's probably actually better given the colour. Um, is a candle dedicated to your goddess? This is a black candle in a jar which is licorice which I have dedicated to the Morrigan. Now all gods and goddesses will assist you in the purification of yourself and your home, your vibrations, because to be purified of the negativities is to serve and be humble in front of them, because you don't want to be taking your negative crap in when you want to be um, communing with the honouring the divine or spirit or however you so see it. There is a hugely rich tradition throughout history, throughout cultures, of cleansing the body and purifying the body as well as the spirit before engaging in ritual work of any kind. Therefore, if you're really stuck and you're thinking, I just can't play this funk, I can't get hold of things really easily, I've tried the stick since it's not working, then give it up to the divine. You know, use a black candle for the sake of the colour magic, because black is great for banishing negativity, or white, or both. And go before your divine and just ask for help, like I mentioned yesterday. Light your candle, put that intent out in the universe, say, so, you know, I need divine assistance to clear this crap out of my life. And that is quite regularly my first port of call. I will cleanse myself, I will um, smudge myself, but when I give things over to the Morrigan and you say, you know, I need your help in clearing the negativity because it's beyond me and you know what's for a lesson and you know what's not for a lesson and you know what's just hindering and everything. And she's obviously got her destroyer aspect. Most goddesses do, no matter how uh, gentle some people might want to portray them. Most gods and goddesses have a, a destruction side, a counterbalance, because you can't have one without the other. So going before your deity and just saying, you know, I need assistance in getting rid of this, can often be the easiest and most potent form of, and you're, you're burning a candle which then lights a flame which then sends a message out to the universe. So, right. So I'm going to actually talk about a spell which I have shown probably before and I have, I know I've talked about it on multiple occasions and I talk through it whenever people ask me. Right, so you need black thread, a black pen, a piece of paper, and a safe place in which to burn it. So, the cauldron. Um, I will not burn it on in this video, I don't think, because I haven't got my heat safety set up. Right, so, basically what you are doing is you are writing down whatever is ailing you. So... Um, there's a work colleague who constantly undermines your work. Or, so then you would write down, work colleague uh, constantly undermining my thing, this, this circumstance, this, this example, this. Right? And then what I would do is cross it out three times. You have no power over me, you have no power over me, you have no power over me. Or, you know, I cleanse you, I cleanse this negativity, I cleanse this negativity, I cleanse this negativity. I then suggest you fold it three times. And then you take your piece of black thread, if it would come undone. Right, and, and you, you get to a length which you feel comfortable with. 
Right. Why black thread? Well, black thread for banishing, obviously, the colour is important in the colour magic and things. But what you're actually doing is you are making a physical representation of what things are doing to you. And it's not about binding the spell so much, although, in, you know, you're tying the spell up with some thread. What you're actually doing in this circumstance is you're showing that there is a negative situation which is tying you in knots. And it's it's binding you, it's stopping you from getting on with your life, it's, it's harming you in some way. And then you put that to flame and you would visualise your intent, you know, to harm them um, for the good of all. Goddess, please help me overcome this negative situation. Purify me of this. Purify me of this negative situation that just won't stop. Help me get the best possible outcome. And then burn it. Burn away all that negativity. <clears throat> Some people recommend that you, you know, you bury the ashes away from your home. I've, you know, seen people say, you know, just flush it down the toilet because it's flushing it away with all the other shit and all that sort of thing. So that's entirely up to you and your own feelings on the matter, I guess. Right, so we come at last <laughs> to making our own incense. I thought I had my little bowl here, I guess I don't. Hmm. I will go get it. Ta-da! Bowl! By the ma magic of editing. <laughs> okay, so we talked about herbs in yesterday's video. And... We did not talk about resins. So I've still got the book here, for the sake of reference, like yesterday. So we will find, if it is actually in here, it should be in here, shortly, yes. Right, <coughs> frankincense is the first resin, <coughs> and probably the most widely used, probably. <coughs> So, frankincense is masculine, sun fire, protection, exorcism, and spirituality. The ancient Egyptians burned it at sunrise to honor Ra. You know, which is interesting. When burned, frankincense releases powerful vibrations which not only uplift those of the area but drive out all in nature negativity and evil. It is used in instances of exorcism, purification and protection as well as consecration. <coughs> Rosemary may be used as a substitute. Right, so let's see, mine's quite large so I'll give it a little bit of a grinding. Right. Uh, I, I'm slightly off camera doing this. I uh, always add a little bit of salt when doing resins for two reasons. It's really great for purification purposes and it helps you grind up resins. It makes it easier to hand grind things. And the other one we're actually going to add is it's, as a resin is its natural counterpart which is myrrh. And we will read that from the book and then I will show you. It's good to have a point of reference with these things just so that if people want to go look at the correspondences they know what uh, where I have looked up these correspondences from for the sake of ease really and again it's the Cunningham's Encyclopedia. So moon is actually feminine. Mer, sorry, myrrh is feminine, the moon, water. Purifies the area, lifts the vibration, and creates peace. Usually used with frankincense, and we're going to talk a little bit about that in a sec. So, frankincense. And then myrrh. The... 
and I added a pinch of each. I will show you what it looks like in a second when I've ground it up. How small you grind it up is entirely up to you. If you're interested in such things, the history of frankincense and myrrh is quite rich and very worth a read. Again, probably its own video. Now, if you only had frankincense, myrrh and salt and burnt that as a, a incense on a charcoal disc, the light is very interesting in here today. Um, that would work really, really well. If you know, if you wanted a three ingredient, simple purification incense, that would work perfectly well and it would smell nice. When we think of it, if myrrh is female and moon and then frankincense is masculine and, and sort of more of a sun energy, it's actually the balance of all things. So we talked about the destructive aspect and the renewing aspect and if we consider that as a balance of things then having a male aspect and a female aspect is a really good thing within purification mixtures because you are actually seeking to drive out negativity, bring in positivity and create a balance within your energy field, within yourself and within your home. So they're then going to add some rosemary A pinch of vervain, I'm going to put a bay leaf in and I'm just going to crush it off camera. And then a pinch, maybe two, of red sandalwood. So it actually mentioned in my book yesterday that, in my book yesterday? Yes, from, from the book yesterday, that bay leaves mixed with sandalwood can be burnt to remove curses and evil spells. So they worked really well in that conjunction. Sandalwood, like I mentioned yesterday, I did talk through the herbal meanings yesterday, so go look in that video if you want more of that. That These are some of my favourite things to burn together. It's probably a one-use incense right there. Let's have a look. Looks pretty good. Right. Sandalwood is a really great herb to use in purification incenses because it's a commanding herb. It forcibly forces out negativity, which I did say yesterday, but I think it's worth repeating. Now, <clears throat> this is by no mean an extensive, complicated recipe for an incense which you can burn on a charcoal disc. And um, please be safe when doing that in a heat proof pot in a safe location. This is by no means an extensive and it's by no means the only things you can burn. It's generally a matter of personal intuition and gut feeling. If your soul tells you to do something then do it. If your soul says you know what I think we should just burn frankincense and some sage then do it. Then go with what you feel is right. This is just obviously a starting point, a jump off point, some ideas. You can then smudge yourself within the smoke from this incense. You can use it to round your home to smudge your home with it and to drive out negativity. And the most important thing is putting your intent in as you're creating something. So as you are creating your incense, you, you're crushing it up and you're visualizing white light going through you, your home, blasting out any negativity. You visualize yourself being happier and lighter and feeling better. And you put all that intent into your incense, like I mentioned yesterday, with the herbal blend. You can put in a crystal to help 
imbue those energies. And yesterday I showed you that you can hold a smoky quartz point to the smoky, port, smoky quartz crystal, sort of visualize that all happening and imbue the surrounding incense in this case with that intent. And the other crystal I mentioned that's really good for this as I mentioned earlier, is citrine. Citrine renews the energy. It's more of the purification through renewal side rather than the destruction of negativity. But <clears throat> it can be a really good idea to no matter how you burn away negativity to pull in positivity at the same time. And that's what I wanted to really highlight within the burning video. Because I enjoy burning magic. I think it's easy. I think it's simple. I think it's effective, I think it works really well, but what a lot of the time is not mentioned is that you are technically creating a void, a vacuum, and nature hates a vacuum and will seek to fill it. So when you are burning away something, you want to be pulling in positive something else. So be aware that A, it doesn't always work because if you're meant to be in this situation for whatever reason then you're going to need to learn the lesson. So say you're having a really difficult time and you want to purify yourself because the situation is making you feel like crap. You can't burn away the situation itself. You can burn away how crappy you feel, you can burn away the 18 other niggles that are getting to you because of this situation but you might not be able to burn away the situation itself. So what you would then have to consider is I need to burn away how I feel about the problem how, or my negative feelings about the problem or my uh, lashing out in anger because I, I'm under so much pressure and thing and then bring in different energies to help me then cope with that situation so if I needed strength if I needed the support of someone if I needed to see things more clearly with a clear vision, to be able to think outside of this problem to help me through. If I needed some finances to come in to help me through the situation, then that would be the positive magic. It's not negative to do destruction magic, however, so that's maybe the wrong term. The drawing magic rather than the destruction magic, that's better, that's a better terminology. So it's push-pull, balance. Um, and balance in all things because you are seeking to balance within yourself and harmonize your life rather than just destroy something and then leave a gaping hole which unfortunately other negativity could easily fill especially if you are feeling vulnerable so what I wanted to really touch upon with the burning magic which often isn't touched upon is that it's really a much better thing to go ahead and burn off the negativity, do you burn in spell, do you banish in, do all that, get rid of it, but remember to couple it with positive drawing, filtering, purifying energy magic as well. So that's going to be it for the burning video. I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope we can all stay positive and many blessings.